With all the hype around new features in upcoming March release of Home Assistant, it was a question, should I or should I not record this video? But nevertheless, here I am. So let's get started with what's new in Home Assistant 2024.3 or March release of Home Assistant. Well, yes, the biggest news not just for this release, for this year, but for the last couple of years, for a lot of Home Assistant users, is drag and drop functionality, or Dungeons and Dragons, or in my case, Dungeons and Drops. So, starting with this release of Home Assistant, we have now something that's called sections. Sections are similar to, I would say, vertical cards, where you are able to configure the display the way you want it inside one column. The rendering of the UI is responsive, meaning whatever you create on the big screen, it should be visible the same way on smaller screen, mobile phones, etc. Of course, if you do shrink it too much, it will still move sections one under the other, but the cards inside the section will stay at the same position. I created a sample dashboard with the experimental sections functionality and I've tried to include as many cards as possible. Of course, there are tons and tons of other cards, especially if you're using Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store front-end components, but the majority or the main ones are here. For example, these are the mushroom cards. Then we have a typical tiles inside Home Assistant. We have Alarmo, Calendar, Humidifier, Media Player, Lights, etc., etc. But what you have to remember, this is experimental functionality, meaning that this is not just beta, but uh, very early beta. It doesn't mean that your Home Assistant will break. It just means that not everything that Home Assistant community can throw at Home Assistant devs has still been tested. There are some currently limitations, but let's talk about possible functionalities. If we click on Edit, the one thing you must remember to enable this functionality the view needs to be in a view type sections experimental. Why isn't there any migration path for your current UI to the experimental UI? Because as I said, this is experimental. Probably it would break a lot of things. So this is on purpose. In the future, when this is released as a full release, there may be migration path or ability to migrate your current dashboards to this section based UI. But until everything is tested, fixed, there is a positive and also negative feedback from a community, some new functionalities added, etc. etc. This needs to be considered experimental. If you have issues or if you have ideas, if you've thought of something that nobody has thought before, send a comment to the devs and they will try to see if it's possible to include it in the final release or if it's possible to fix the bug. Also note, since a lot of you are using front-end hacks components, and I am one of the people doing that too, you need to test. And if that component has issues with experimental sections, you need to report that to the developer of the HACS frontend component. But let me show you how drag and drop works. For example, if you have a lot of tiles inside one section, you can drag and drop those tiles inside the section. But you can also move tiles from one section to the other section. And not just that, you can also move sections, so you can arrange them the way you like. One thing I would recommend if you're starting from the scratch is to create a new section, click on it, click on add, and instead using by card, go by entity. For example, let's imagine that this section is living room. I could just type here living, and then select all the entities that I want to add inside the living room. Click on continue. Home Assistant will suggest type of the card matching, but you can of course pick a different card. If you're satisfied, click on add to dashboard. This is an easier way on adding multiple entities to one section. If you want to customize it, click on pencil, type in for example living room. And yes, you can also add icon. On a Windows, click on Windows key plus dot, select an icon and click add. And that's it. You can drag the things around. You can drop the things around, and this is the new experimental dashboard. Scripts are very powerful tools, and I do not use them that much in my system, but now they have been improved and they can interact with the user via the UI. For example, I have here send notification to phone, which is a simple script that is using sequence 
called service notification, but instead of a fixed title and a message of that message that will be sent to my mobile phone. Instead of that, we have fields, and those fields are used to capture the user input and then use that input as a variable for the notification service. Or how that would look in Home Assistant if we have a script like this and go to Overview, click on a button, it will ask us for a message title, message title, and then the text of the message. Click on Run, and the script has been run with the user input from Home Assistant UI. Of course, this is just one of the examples that you can do. You can use it to control the lights, and with this, being able to control what light, what intensity, what color, what effect, etc., etc. Also, it can be used with the voice services, but it all depends on your creativity. In the time the 3 release is officially released, there will be at least two blueprints that you can use for the scripts. One will be similar to this one, I think, and the other one will be adding items to your shopping list or to your to-do list. There are two improvements to the energy card. One, if you click on three dots, you can now also double data. In the release 2024, the 2 or February release, we received the ability to export historical data from the entities. Now we have option to download data from the energy dashboard. But besides that comma separated file export functionality, we also have this individual devices detail usage, where we can see a graph with all the individual devices usage. So from the visual standpoint, you can easily see what device is at what period of time using the most energy. Also, the March release of Home Assistant brings us new assist sentences. We can now in more detail control the vacuum cleaners, valves, but unfortunately the list of supported valves is not that long, covers, blinds, and media players. For example, for media players, you can use commands such as play, pause, unpause, fast forward, next, and set the volume. Also, you can use specific position for cover and blinds, such as this one here. Set Zeta Curtain to 75%. And the curtain has been moved to that position. Some of the users have been complaining about the potential security risk with Nabucasa. No, the Nabucasa is not compromised, but there was one ability. For example, if by mistake you have disabled Nabucasa access in your remote instance of Home Assistant, went away, there was a way for you to activate that functionality from within Nabucasa even if you are not at the location. Now in Home Assistant you have new option that allows you to disable that functionality, meaning that if you want later on to enable Nabucasa access to your Home Assistant or your remote access to that machine, you will have to physically get to that network and on that network disable that functionality. This is the improvement for all of those people that simply do not want to have any external access and want to prevent any way of enabling that access from outside. There is now the option to use translated state inside your templates. For example, if we look at this template here, binary sensor moving backyard, it will show state on and the sun will be below horizon. But if we would use translated state, you see that now instead of on for the binary sensor, we have detected and instead below underscore horizon, we now have a much nicer view of below horizon as we would normally say it or write it. This is a very powerful tool that enables you to push entities inside your notifications or voice prompts and have states the way you want to hear or read. There are, of course, as always, other noteworthy changes. You can read the full list on the documentation that will be, as always, linked in the video description. I would like to point, for example, to this one here. Use new ZigPy OTA providers for ZHA. But I would like to warn you of one current issue. If you are using ZHA and you have unable ability to use ZigBee to MQTT over the air or OTA database, there is issue that can break your devices currently. Maybe this will be fixed by the time this video is released, but be careful on updating your devices if you are using ZHA and have unable access to ZigBee to MQTT over the air database. If I remember, I will posting a link to that GitHub issue down in the video description. Of course, there are also a couple of new integrations, plus virtual integrations, and Velux integration is now available through the UI. In terms of backward incompatible changes, I would like to point on a couple of them. For example, med.no. If you are using them as a weather service, you know that usually they provided 
two entities. One was for the daily, the other one was for the hourly forecast, if I'm not mistaken. That has been fixed and now everything is inside the one single entity. But because of that, you may need to adapt your automations or scripts or whatever if you were using one or the other of those sensors. And for the Z-Wave, we have changed to the climate turn-on service. Please read the documentation and see if this affects your system. One note, this video, as always, is recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant. The latest beta release at the time of the recording is beta 5. According to the beta channel Discord, there are still some bugs that are getting squished, but it looks like all of the functionality that I've shown you here will be available in the final release. And that, of course, is on the first Wednesday of new month. So, what are your thoughts about the March release of Home Assist? Do you think that this year will be the year of UI? If anybody remembers, I think in a January, I said that we can expect a lot of things around dashboard. And that was just my presumption. I didn't make S out of me, but I did presume that this year will be dedicated to Home Assistant dashboards or Home Assistant UI. We creators did have a preview of this new UI a couple of days before it was officially released and I'm also very proud about most of the creators that this information wasn't leaked to the public because we were all very keen to see reaction of the community on the things that were reported by the Home Assistant devs. I will not be once again going into details why these videos are not spoilers, because everything you see here is already available at Beta Channel. And if you have watched the stream with the devs, they have also called on each and every one of you who has a spare system to install the Beta Test version of the system and test it to see if it works in their environment. This also makes sure that when Home Assistant is released, the full release, it has been tested against your configuration, your setup, your integration, your devices. Try it, see if something is broken, and if it is, report the issue before the full release is out. Then you will not have issues on your own system. I'm aware that not everybody can do it and has time, resources, or energy to do it, but all of you that do have time, energy, resources, will, enthusiasm, or whatever, please try and make each release of Home Assistant more stable and better. And what was your favorite new functionality in the March release of Home Assistant? I bet that at least 80% of you will say the new experimental UI. But please remember, this is still experimental version of the UI. Don't rely on it heavily and do remember that if things break, you need to report them so they can be fixed. For me, of course, it was drag and drop or Dungeons and Dragons, but also loved all of the improvements in the assist and it's nice to see that even if the year of the voice has ended, we are seeing each new month a new improvements to the assist in Home Assistant. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot. It's not just an icon on the screen. It tells YouTube that this video was good and that more people should see it. But also while you are already there, check that you are subscribed. If not, click on subscribe button, ding the bell, so you get notified on the future video updates. And for the end, I want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or of course, you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can do a super thanks and as always, I will be super thankful for that. But I must also say thanks to all of you who have watched, liked, subscribed, shared and commented on my videos. Thank you again, I really do appreciate it. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.